May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Will the college please come to order? I'd like to welcome all of you to the College of Complexes tonight. My name is Tim. They're, they're pro, the protocol for the College of Complexes is as follows. Uh, first, there'll be a brief, question, a brief announcements period. Then our speaker will be able to speak. After that, we'll have an announcement, I mean, a question period, and then the speaker will get the last word. There are two rules to the College of Complexes. One is uh, no personal attacks, oh, and the other one is one fool at a time. Let's introduce our speaker tonight. His name is Flash ABC. He's going to be talking about graffiti art in Chicago. He's going to be covering three main points. One is the roots of the graffiti. Number two, the city's attacks of the graffiti on moral grounds. And then three, return to the old school. We've got a lot of good slideshows. And I will also say that Flash ABC does have some art available for sale in the back, so please avail yourself. You might find something you like and help support his endeavors. Let's give a warm, rousing welcome to Flash ABC. Uh, thank you very much for having me tonight. Uh, my name is Flash ABC. I am a member of Red Hat to Funk. Renegades of Funk is a non-profit organization that preserves Chicago hip-hop from the beginning. Any uh, murals and stuff like that, when we have artists working with them, they go through us to uh, work with us. What I'm going to show tonight is how this all started in, in um, the realm of Chicago. So, the picture that you're seeing right now on the slideshow is um, a documentary that was shown on PBS between 1982 and 1989. And once this documentary went through, there was also books that came with it with, from Martha Cooper and everything. But what it showed was one of the elements of hip hop. Uh, there are four elements of hip hop. As we all know, there's breakdancing, graffiti, uh, emceeing, and DJing. Just like in the Renaissance Fair, the Renaissance Fair had its four elements. And that's how we tied it. This is a legitimate art form. So Harry Chiffon starts documenting early in New York City the trains and makes this documentary and showing these graffiti artists, which is um, probably a second generation because graffiti starts in New York and Philadelphia early in the 70s. It doesn't start um, like here in Chicago, but they had the movement going further where they eliminated the gangs from their environment and just started to do graffiti art. As you see the gentleman right there, he's painting in between the train and he's able to paint this piece very symmetrically perfect. So this is an art form um, that people don't understand that is done very fast. It's done within two to three hours and we don't get to see it. We don't get to go back and touch it up. It's done and it's done quickly. Um, as you see in the pictures, one thing that I like about graffiti is that it brings all cultures together. If you're poor, you were doing graffiti. Okay, if it was poor white, poor black, and as you see in the picture here, they would gather at the writer's bench in New York and do your four or five elements of hip hop. And of course, um, some of the first early pieces were messages, dump Koch, you know, you, you've probably seen crime in the city. Um, messages. That's where the, the difference is, is. Of course, there was a movie that came out then, Hollywood took it over, came up with Beat Street, and everybody started to pay attention more to the breakdown scene. But here is one of the pieces. And as you see, it's always on the train. There's always that um, urban environment with graffiti where you're on the train, you're in the city. So this is one of the pieces from Beat Street that probably the only one that I like out of the whole movie. And what the movie is playing is that, uh, what do you call it, everybody's always looking at us um, about graffiti, about how wrong it is. Graffiti, the difference between graffiti and street art is 
Graffiti is the evolution of the letters, the evolution of the 3D tag, the inside. You see these designs. This piece right here to me represents both because street art is then a message, a sticker. It isn't a sticker. It's a political message. It isn't a political. It's a flower. It isn't a flower. So just so you know, there is a difference between graffiti and street art. When they say the word graffiti, that is the evolution of the letters. These, have, these letters have technique in them. They have 3D. They have aura. They have design. There is a concept that goes with graffiti art. Street art, which they're trying to mix it in, is that what it is? It could be a sticker. It isn't. It's a political message. It is. It's something. It's the advancement of graffiti. But I'm a traditionalist. I go back to the graffiti letters. Because when I grew up, this was my graffiti. This is Chicago. This is the Chicago I grew up in. Black and blue, black and yellow, ugliness, gang. From between 1979 and 1980, this is what I fought. I didn't want to be part of this. And they were doing it on every corner in the city. This was the art of Chicago, the representation of graffiti. So what happens with us? Let's go to us. I'm switching over to a slideshow. This is where I grew up in Logan Square. This is in here, the Eagle Monument at Logan Square, where you all are protesting all the time on Saturdays. So it's called the Chicago's Writers Bench. Just like New York has a gathering for graffiti artists, here's a gathering for Chicago. But in 1985, this was what I was surrounded by. Spanish lords, Latin lovers. On every corner, when you see this arrow, that means there was 15 guys representing that guy selling drugs, and you couldn't go through there if you had covers. Me and my friends were all surrounded by them. <laughs> but this is where we started to do graffiti in our neighborhood, in our backyard. We lived next to the Mega Mall. This is the first piece that we did on Sacramento. My friend went to New York and came back to us and we're 15. He's like, do not do gang. There's no such thing as gangs for us. We're going to do graffiti. But what kind of graffiti? I'll show you. And he did this piece between uh, Sacramento, between Belmont and DeRozzi un underneath the track. Yes, we had houses that then we started to go into our houses and spray paint them. If you don't think this is a political piece for Chicago, to us it was. This is spy versus spy, and if you look, it's people versus folks. That's the two gangs in Chicago, and here they are fighting themselves. So we were looking already to put stuff like this up. Then we started to do, it grows, and we started to do little things in the neighborhood, so we started to do pieces, of dedications for people that got shot. The gangs would come up to us, oh, you know how to paint? How about if you do something for my friend that got shot? We're going to apartments and paint. Here's me behind the McDonald's on Milwaukee Avenue, 1984. Behind father and son pizza. There's a gag. This is a tunnel that's covered up on Logan Boulevard by the skate park. Some of you might remember there was a Zares in a community. And you go up and you cut through that long tunnel and you come out on the boulevard. This, this is one of my, these are my first photos. So these are the first pieces of New Yorkers starting to come over to Chicago and paint. I got steak sauce. There's an apartment. That gentleman right there is actually DJ Nonstop. He's on B96 and he tours with DMX. But what happens to us is what happens to everybody. And I'm going to hold it right here in this piece because this piece represents what happened to us. We're in Logan Square, we're able to paint, everybody's giving us props, and the Mega Mall is there. And you know the Mega Mall has that wall behind it, so other graffiti artists come and they start painting. And what happened was, they went over the gang. If you look, right? You want, they went over the gang graffiti. And that, he's like, that's a big no-no. He's right. Next thing you know, they come up to us and they tell us, we can't paint in the neighborhood no more. So. Here's some more pieces. 
This is the 606. This is the first piece that was on the 606 before anything. And I documented it, and we'll talk about the 606 later. This is the Mega Mall also. These are the first pieces in Chicago where we forget about the gangs. And we start to try to do this. And just like everything, the gang comes up to us and tells us, you can't do graffiti no more. Why? Because you guys keep going over us and there's no respect. Bet. Two days later, somebody else gets shot. You're welcome. Here there comes another gang again. Hey, can you guys paint the piece? And we're like, this is happening too much. So we go to the rooftop of the Mega Mall. And I don't know if you know the rooftop of the Mega Mall. It's where the blue line comes out at that time. And this is the first piece that's actually put on a rooftop that doesn't represent gang. In New York style graffiti, is a dedication to this guy, Joey. And then after this, when I go take the pictures, I start to notice people's heads turn. Like, whoa. And we all start to forget it. We're really gonna go like New York. And we start hitting the rooftops everywhere. We go all the way up to the Damon. This is located on Milwaukee and Fullerton, top of Hollander. Now tons of people paint that one. Rooftop. Of course, we paint too much in our neighborhood. Logan Square Neighborhood Association comes, says, why don't you paint the first graffiti wall in Logan Square? And we did. <laughs> this is probably our, well, I, I see our hype, Michael J. Michael J. Fox is playing in the background, Team Wolf, Logan. I made sure to get the shot. So see, as a kid, I was already even thinking that these were timepieces, because this wall doesn't exist no more. Logan Square in the 90s would turn into a mural hating place. The walls would be buffed. If you look at the fireman's mural, it's a perfect example where they removed the mural from the wall and then just placed it off of it. There was a big ban on spray paint, and it started in Logan Square. It was Alderman Mel who started the ban, not daily. These are more pictures and pieces throughout the city. Here's the rest of the Logan Square terminal. Nightmare on a yellow tag. You paint what you see in your neighborhood. And when I would sit there on Schubert and Spalding, and see people just coming to buy drugs and acid. Well, I got influenced, and that's what this is called. This is called Nightmare on the Yellow Tap. Because that's all, this is what I was influenced by when I was young. Uh, you paint what you're influenced by. I start to venture off as a photographer, even as a kid. And what people don't understand is that at that time as a kid, you weren't supposed to cut over to another neighborhood, you notice, but graffiti put me on top of everybody, above everybody on the train line, and I got to see the city grow from above. I, I, no more did I see those viaducts that divide these neighborhoods, because to me, when you go through one neighborhood, how, how do you know when you pass through a neighborhood, when you pass through a viaduct? The nationality changes. The city's divided by the viaducts. Getting above those viaducts allowed me to see and go around the city that I never even knew existed. Cheesy movie. This is actually Wicker Park over by Le Moyne. The influence of Chicago games, no matter what, always infiltrates people in Chicago. To the point you see that here, here we are trying to represent ABC and it looks, looks more like we're doing gang signs. But it's what I want people to understand. We got to get away from those ugly colors. You know, here's our purples and pinks, and we no longer had to see those ugly walls anymore. We started putting it up for free, whatever we could. And they came from New York and influenced us. There was an inflammation, and it was to go to the rooftops. The city's ugly from above with all that brown, right? And we've been fighting that brown forever. There are three budgets in this city for the buff. The CTA has one, the Park District, and the Streets and Sanitation. Four million each one. And you think about the money wasted. You know, we voted in that stuff. So what happens to me 
of course I get caught. <laughs> you get caught doing that. And then I, um, I went to the military. And in 2003, we did uh, WNUR started to do radio shows with us. I'm going on the mic. Huh? Can you talk into the mic? Oh, yeah, sure. What happened was um, um, Loyola started to do hip hop shows. And we put the internet, we started to, as graffiti artists, attack the internet early, putting pictures, putting websites, to the point that um, I was a moderator for the Chicago Graffiti Forums for probably 15 years before Facebook took it all away. And everybody was going over there to organize themselves to do all these walls that, that you see us doing. So I have been doing walls with my friends since 2003. This is the Logan Square Dog Park. We got the Marian Owls, the Cafeteria Marian Owls that's no longer there. These are all the old schoolers when we gather up. This is Risk ABC. When we come out and we paint, and it's basic. Um, there's a difference between Chicago graffiti and New York graffiti. And I'll change it. If you don't know, I'm involved in the Frank and Knuckles mural twice. We put it up on a walk in Sacramento on the rooftop. And the city loved it so much that the owner came and erased it nine months later. So it took me three years then later to get it back on the B-line. So I've always been fighting the city. Uh, that's, that's not afraid, but I know the law. I give it back to them. Is there a ban on spray paint in Chicago? Is there a ban on spray paint in you Chicago? Can't purchase it. There it is. Can I walk down the street with a can of spray paint in Chicago? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. But we have a society here that has criminalized art. Because when I came back to Logan Square in 2008, between 2003 and 2008, nobody wanted to have these murals. So if you go from 22nd and Kedzie all the way to 63rd, every other block the crew have a wall. And I was invited on those walls between 2003 and 2008. And they have an event, they have an event every year now called Meeting of Styles. And all these graffiti artists from around the world come to Chicago and paint that south side on all their walls. Almost three football fields worth of graffiti. They're painting. So I wanted to bring this back to Logan Square. Because between my history is Logan Square and the history is that we started to do this art form before it was, you know, popular. Now, uh, you go to Logan Square, there's not a corner that doesn't have graffiti, right? <laughs> but this is the south side, and this is, if we go through this, it's 140 pictures of eight years worth of, uh, I've been documenting. These are all my photos. They've been painting every single year. There's football fields worth of graffiti over there. Just countless. And you see, it's about the background, too. People think that we're not only into our letters. They're, you see background. You see the letters. You see, you see characters what that you're familiar of, with, right? What is some of that mean? <laughs> okay. Perfect example. Well, somebody asked right now, what does some of that mean? So I'm going to come up. Graffiti artists like to put their names up on the walls, right? Each and every single one piece that you just saw there was a name. Yes, they love to put their name up. That's that's what it's about. And in putting up their name, I'm looking for something. In putting their name, they're keeping a tradition that has been going on since the 70s. This is a person's name in Chicago. In Chicago, you're going to learn something tonight. The difference between Chicago graffiti and New York graffiti is Chicago graffiti is legible. You can read it. The letters are coming out at you. There is a balance and flow. 
where New York doesn't ha doesn't want that, doesn't have that, hides their letters. If you look at this, this is a traditional Chicago piece. You have balance and flow. What I mean, balance and flow, if I have a design over here, you're going to come over here and see that same design. The piece is P E G E, simple. Do you see it now? Yes. Do you see the P? Here's our P. It's a simple. All this other stuff is designs and doodads and what graffiti is. In tradition, graffiti has arrows, auras, and 3D. Here's your arrows. Here's an arrow over here. Here's your aura going around the hole. And then here's your 3D. Why? Because when they, these guys are looking for the masses, when you see it off the train, this piece actually moves with the train. You actually start to be able to see and read it. Next one, same thing in Chicago. He tilted his letters, but there's a D-R-A-S in there. D, here's a wacky R, here's the A coming at an angle, and here's your S sideways. But if you measure this over here, and you see this design over here, here's a Chicago tradition. They'll put it over here too. So we carry a tradition of our letters. Graffiti art is our names. This is an art piece. And that's what people, we're, we're trying to make people understand. There's backgrounds and everything, but we do graffiti art. We do letters. There's always going to be a background. You see, she does the last This is a, a girl. You see what I mean? When you see something over here, this arrow, you see it over here. You can expect the design over there for it. If you measure some of these angles and flows, these guys are so good that with one angle on one side, here's a perfect one. See the arrow on this side? There's an arrow on that side, isn't there? Whatever the letter structure is, they're going to keep a tradition going. And the tradition, the tradition has been set years ago in the 70s. You know, when the New York graffiti artist said it. It has letter structure, you have 3D, you have aura, you have design, and you have doodads. That's what a graffiti artist says in a documentary. There's always doodads, cuts and doodads and flows. But the piece has a flow to it. And this is the art piece. So, and that is what we're trying to exp uh, show you. That yes, they have the background and everything, but all this is done for free. And they like to paint freely. This is the last great form of artistic expression created by American kids that hasn't been dominated. You see it in movies here and there, but still to the tradition. I have this wall in Logan Square, and I've had it for eight years. And for eight years, I have to have a calendar schedule where we have panels that get rotated monthly and bi-weekly, and they come. And they, as the old school artists, they see me, and there is a form of respect that they're willing to wait their turn. So we've built a community. There is a community out there, and that community is painting all those murals that you guys see around the city. But here's where they get to come in Logan Square and paint for free. And let me uh, let me go to the beginning of this real quick. This is actually the beginning of the slideshow that I took a shortcut on, but the walls behind Liberty Bank, and it has three sections in the front, 12 by 100, 15 by 50, and a small section 9 by 50. And that's why I said the long one is the crew wall. The middle section pick has come out in the reader tons of times with tributes to hip hop, people that passed away. We have an alley side. And this is what it looks like from above. CTA Blue Line has 182,000 daily riders. Only two other cities are connected by airport, Chicago and New York. So 
we know what we're doing here. When we first started the wall, they had drug needles and it was abandoned. These are the pictures of the first tier. Every artist that paints on this other panel understands that the, the other side, the panel I'm showing you, is a community wall. And they don't touch that. I work with any square, and this is where I store the scaffolds. 2328 North Milwaukee. Every uh, Wednesday, you can go there and do art. But he, here are the pictures of the first years of the wall on, on how we had to clean that up. Drug needles, everything. <coughs> and then we start. And then we start giving the wall up to certain spaces, certain people to do certain art. The first year, we kind of left it up. But as the wall started to pick up, we started to see more productions. This is the very same wall. <coughs> Gentleman came from uh, Singapore to paint on the wall. This art is done fast. They do it over the weekend. Four hours, their pieces, and they're done. They come back and be able to do that. Tributes. We brought in the New Yorkers one year, and they did a whole production. Another tribute to another artist that passed away. And that's what people do on there. They get their expressions off of, even at times. This is a fish production. See how they have their own background. <clears throat> They'll put the letters up first, though. They'll put the letters up first, and then they'll work on the background. Yeah, of course we're going to celebrate the Cubs, the Sox. Now we're having graffiti battles, graffiti competitions on this. In the last couple of years we started to do competitions. And, uh, we do everything on our own. So imagine this is once a month, they're there buffing the wall and painting it, and getting it up. Mm. What do you mean by buffing the wall? They clean up the old one? Or? Yeah. Mostly, uh, when they ask the question, what is buffing the wall? Mostly what happens is that people come by the wall now and drop off their old house paint because they know that we'll use it to. And what we want to do is just respect the other artist and erase this piece completely so that when we put up something, the old piece doesn't show. So that's what he means by that's what he means by buffing the wall. You mean just paint over the old? Yeah, you paint over the old with uh, old house paint because uh, no matter what, it's latex, and we're putting acrylic, so we do our own coating. The art pieces that I have in the back, what happens is after a while the rain comes and it starts to pop, so I noticed in uh, Detroit. There's a community that goes around the graffiti walls and picks up chip paint, and then ladies do art to uh, uh, support themselves. There's, uh, the company supports three homeless ladies. So I started to do the same, and the pieces that you see in the back is me taking picture frames, cutting out, and then you get a piece of uh, art history from these walls. It's just a little piece, 10 bucks, if anybody wants anything. But as you see, they have themes. They do have themes. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I mean, isn't that beautiful? It's all from Logan Square, and I put this piece up. Next, you know, all the hipster uh, places were tagging in and everything, but, and I, I removed it. This is my piece. This is called Logan Boy by Cesar Perez. Very simple. But this piece came out in the Forbes. Is Logan Square going up in rent? Yeah. I uh, sometimes feel that by me doing this and cleaning this up, I moved myself out of Logan Square. Because I did this for eight years at Logan Square, and I lived right down the block at Cornelia. And every year, my rent went up 100 bucks. Now I'm at Harlem and Irving for the first time in my life. Moved out of Logan Square <laughs> at 50.
But this is what I like to do. This is the progression of the art. <coughs> this says nerd. <laughs> I've also worked. I've also worked on the. Uh, I call it sometimes the six six six. But when the city started to do the six oh six, I told them, "Sorry, we were painting there before you guys. What are you gonna do for us?" And we forced a cultural center to give us the walls back from Central Park all the way to Sacramento, and they paid us. They paid us and for that big opening of the 606, and now we're having trouble going back because the art's getting old and we want to paint it again. But this is why I'm out here, because we painted those walls, and even the artists got pushed out because we have not been back. It's all gentrification. Yeah, you got it. And it's not that it's gentrification, it's just we've been painting there since, you know, we never needed the budget, we never needed anything, we always did our own research. We don't care who moves in, just don't, dis and that's what we're, what we're talking about, displacement. Where I don't care where I live, let me come back to my, my spot, my neighborhood, where I grew up on to paint. I don't care where I live. I painted there since the 80s. Why can't I go back? Just because you got your rich condo? No. You know, and that's that's the real fight right there. You're right. When they come in, they like our art, but then they don't let us come back. Because this stuff is faded now. If you go look, we're kind of upset that it's really faded and we're not allowed to go back. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, you know, I, I like, I can see. I can see where you are looking for artistic space and other types of things, but when I think of, a, of, of an art like that form, don't you need like permission of the property owner first before you go, you know, painting on an open wall or something? The wall that I have right now, I have permission mm -hmm. to the point that uh, the cops came by not last year and tried to shut me down when they were doing the whole Amazon thing. Right. I know you guys saw, they really attacked the artists last year when they came trying to get that Amazon deal, right? Right. So what did I do? The cop came, there was a kid, St. Patrick's Day. The cop comes and starts yelling at the kid. We start, I start getting the phone calls, I'm on the phone. And what I did was I kept it off the internet. When you do something you love, you, you actually do think it out. And what I did was I saw all the negativity. <laughs> I thought my mom was there. Look, I saw all the negativity that what Amazon was throwing. So I went and I, I got petitions going. I got petitions from the neighborhoods. I got petitions, I left them at the gallery. And then I went to all those tour companies. I know, I know you guys see them. They're out there looking at all the graffiti walls. They come by the wall and they explain and they do the tours. So I, I, I go out, if you're gonna get involved something, you know who's come by. I went and got like eight of the tour companies and they wrote me out later. And then I went and I got the permit from the owner and then I made two permits. One with Joe Moreno's name and one without Joe Moreno's name. And I walked up to him and I said, talk to your district commander because we're having problems are you with me or are you not? Here's all my paperwork. 17 pages of petition of people wanting to see this project continue. You know what? He signed it. He signed it. And I never had to see it. <laughs> question in the back. I got a two-part question. He's got a two-parter. Yeah. Uh, first of all, did you see uh, when they have letters, uh, what is it most of the time people's names? People's nicknames. Yeah. Like you'll see Flash, you'll see Pengo. They, if you pay me, I'll do le graffiti letters for an advertisement. You know, and that's. But you can't see their names very quick. It's hard to distinguish it. That's the uh, art of it, for you to sit there. Let's bring one up. For you to sit there and start reading these letters, 
What does this say? Is that a name? Nigeria. Huh? Sugar. Look, he's seen something. You see. Here. Richard? Somebody said TH. Richard? Who said TH? Does that say X Eskimo? It Here's T. It's Charlie Pato. Hey, it's Charlie Pato. There you go. This is, this is Stolzer. T-H-O-R. I don't have the rest of the piece. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you look at she's right. Who, did, who said that? Who said that? That's a D at the end. Karina. Very good. That is a D at the end. What else will it say besides somebody's name? Is this graffiti? No, because it's not letters, or only the top. Oh, only the top. But see, there you go. This is what we're talking about. It is graffiti. It is a graffiti mural. Here's where we go into the difference. Because, like he says, why do they just put up their name? Because that's what graffiti is. We put up our names. But in the concept, we'll give tribute to Picasso right here, right? There's a tribute to Picasso there. There's the internet showing you what they're looking at. It, it, it really is up to the artist that does graffiti, how much concept he wants to put in in his background and everything. And you can see by obviously by this guy, he wanted to send a big message. Cause to the point that you don't even see his letters anymore. His letters like hitting into the piece and you see the Picasso, the internet. Love. It says love. There you go. So it's street art if there's no letters. Letters yeah. need graffiti. Uh, and that's what I say. Graffiti is the evolution of the tag. Okay, but there's still tags today. That's ugly, right? Yeah. They'll never crazy. stop doing it. Huh? They'll never stop doing it. But that's the nasty stuff that yeah. you say it's, we're drug dealers here. We're oh no, no, no. There's, you know, that's the difference between gang graffiti uh -huh. and this graffiti. What you're talking about, and when they put, hey, come by here. That's gang graffiti. It doesn't leave its neighborhood. It looks like the stuff that I was showing you earlier, even to this day, where they do markings. The tag, um, if you actually see. That's always like creepy, right? Tagging stuff. The tag oh, is. With like the laughing okay, stuff. Yes. Uh -huh. this, this right here is the evolution of his tag. There they go. It says D A C, but when you see it in the street, you and he tags it with just a marker, you see that letter formation. There is a letter formation going on here in that's the tag. Hard, that's hard. Yeah. The yeah. tag, to me, is like a mosquito bite. Right? Microphone. If, oh, <laughs> thank you. If the tag is like a mosquito bite, if you pay attention to that and you start scratching it and it itches, it gets bad and it gets destroyed, right? That's how you, when you go after a tagger and you destroy his tag, you erase it, and he doesn't come back or he comes back. This is the flower that came from the tag. It blossomed. Well, I think it's a different quality of person than good art. They still do it. How? How is it a different quality? It's the evolution of it. I got a two-part question. Okay, he has a two-part. What's your second part? What's the second part? And I'm going to answer it quick. Okay. What is it? I've got a question. Yes. I'll help you. Yes. Um, you know, I've been out west in the canyons, and um, the Native Americans were whoever they were from years and years ago. They and others. Yeah, they put their art up on the wall. And uh, they have found also that most of the art in those caves in France are kids putting up their art. The same tribe. And, <laughs> and I don't, and I, uh, and yet if you go down there now, you're not allowed to touch the old graffiti with your new graffiti. Correct. And, uh, I think that's kind of unfair because uh, we're there and we don't we're not allowed to leave our tag when the people who were there before us were allowed to leave their tag. I like that. I love that. Just tag. Just go ahead and tag without those books. No. The uh, and that's what where people that's where I say that's the evolution of graffiti that we know that kids are the first ones in their curiosity to want to say, I was here. And that's all really graffiti is. 
is to say that you were here. They leave their name, they leave something, but in, in, in those ones, I, I do like to see them preserved so that people understand that what we're doing now is the evolution of that. Can you cut the edges on that without using a shield? Can you do it right with a can? Yes. Really? Yes. All this is free form art. They don't. They, you know, they used to sketch it. They practice it. But some some of these images, like I said, go up within four hours. Even the ladies and the pictures that you see of the people. These people that have been doing this all over the world now. We're we're four generations deep in Chicago, and that's one of the things why people, well, we're out here speaking so that you understand that this is the fastest form of art, and if we do it because we love it. But when people try to tell us, well, you could do it for free. No, because this is a skill. And this is a skill level that started when I was 15. And you can't take away the years. You're going to pay me. How do you stop over spray? Um, can I cut you off? And see, a special nozzle? see, and here's, a, here's the evolution of graffiti where we're getting is that the spray paint can that you got at the store is not the same spray paint can we use. Uh, we have nozzles controls. We have different spray paint can. If you want to spray paint inside, you go to Momentum Art Store in, in uh, Oak Park and you get sugar coated graffiti so you can do demonstrations inside now. The, the, the cans are high pressure, low pressure, different. You turn them around this way and it gives you a thinner line. It is about uh, like an airbrush tool in, in paint now the art, and, and the shame of it is, the spray paint can is invented in Chicago in the World's Fair, and is banned in Chicago. Okay. Imagine that. It's so American. So Chicago. That's so Chicago. That's so Chicago. We invented the spray paint can, and there was tons of companies. My friends collect on eBay all these rare Chicago cans. But where is our spray paint now? In Europe. And it's, and it's very good quality, very can control. High, like I said, high pressure, low pressure. You see the colors, they're vibrant. These are colors that you can't find at the store. And it, it, it's evolved. The graffiti art that we have seen has evolved. No, I'll get you after I get him. Um, some of this work is just mind blowing, it's so good. But uh, I guess I have a, a legal question. Um, if you had to guess, what percentage of artwork would you say that you've done on uh, buildings where you either got somebody's permission or it was or you owned it, as opposed to the percentage of work you've done on buildings where you didn't get That's permission. a good question. So I did graffiti between 1983 and 87. Back up a little bit from the um, No problem. What is seen as the, the old stuff, and I got arrested. So if you go to artisticbombingcrew.com, that just shows our 80s stuff. And you're right, that's the stuff that I got arrested for, and it was wrong, and yeah, I paid, I either go to jail, go to the National Guard. That's, that's, that's where I come from. Now, you know, it's a felony. Now the kids, when they do it, and you know, they get that record and they can't work no more. So, what do I do now? I've been doing graffiti since now they brought me back in 2003. And I see a community that didn't really have a, um, a push. Uh, am I seen as a role model? Yes, I am a mechanical engineer that works for a sports company um, doing design drawings. So they see me as a leader and as an evolutionist because I have shown, I understand that I can't do what you're seeing on the screen, because I'm 50 just like you guys, and these kids can paint, and it's a marvel, and it's a really uh, fascinating artwork. And if they just want me to be part of it, to speak to you guys, or to go around the country and talking about it, I'm willing to take that responsibility. Because we need to show this art form. And we need people to understand that it has a history, it has concept, and it has rules and techniques. Bob, you have, you have I want to get him all the way in the back because he's been back to raising oh. his hand all the time. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm wondering how do, especially when you're dealing with a uh, building that are perfectly all common, the business, uh, 
Well, so he's asking me how does that work, and what I, if you, you don't get involved in something unless you know it. And the city of Chicago does have a municipal code that we teach the landlords that if they want a mural on their building, they don't have to go to downtown to get a permit. It is an artistic impression. So yeah, we do have a lot of owners that want us to do this, like the owner at Project Logan, and I make him write out a list. I mean, I make I write out a permit, putting the city law in there. So even when the city goes after him, because they do, he already is knows the law. And the law is that I can put any artistic impression up on a building as long as I'm not advertising. And what about the business the, the landowner that doesn't want you to be then I stay away from them. I've never put anything on a building in my adulthood for somebody that didn't want it. Okay. Yeah, there's, you're absolutely, you know, this is an art, we've grown. I'm asking, I ask permission. And if he doesn't want it, I go. But for every person that says no, I have like seven walls around the city that, I rotate artists so that they can get this expression out. Because this is energy. This is energy that we've been containing as little kids that we have to get out. <coughs> and that's where the vandalism comes into play because they, we gotta get it out. But I guarantee you when somebody's painting on my wall and they get that freedom out, it, it, it does calm down that spirit. They understand. This is about you know a spiritual releasing. Do you know Banksy, or have you ever met Banksy? Never. <laughs> I think Banksy is great. I think Banksy um, has started up the question, what are we doing? What are these people doing on these walls? Um, if it's not for these uh, documentaries, I've been in a few documentaries, and if, if there they're needed to be conversation, because people didn't know. Banksy represents that second generation that I'm telling you that is now being labeled as street art because he puts up a poster and he's pulling something in there so I <coughs> you have to engo uh, embrace that you have to embrace that movie and say look this is what's going on and it's going to continue plus okay uh, <coughs> there's a ton of suburbs out there with nothing on it and you know a lot of these places are looking for public art you know, I mean, my town of Algonquin alone, they had to, they have a Mexican restaurant next to a park on the river, and the guy was having trouble finding a graffiti artist to paint him. How, how he does he find me? <laughs> no, there, it, and it's hard because we've gotten to the point, um, there are people that, in a sense, when I do one of these walls now, I got a guy coming in from, where does, where does Sneak come from? Where? No, oh, he's, he's going by Joliet. He's, I have a guy that comes in with a big pickup truck and he has a sprayer and he preps the wall for us now. Does he Are, do that for a living? No. They get paid he to work, do it or no. He's one of, one of my old school graffiti artist friends that uh, he's a contract worker and he works at McCormick Place, but he has a generator and sprayers. Um, every project that you see, like the, any, the, the 606 and the Logan Square Dog Park, when I get that budget, I include a scaffold. That's for myself. I include a generator. I've included throughout the years doing all these projects. Something so that when we do these projects with a lot of artists, we cut down our time and our money goes, you know, more money goes into our pocket. But when we do projects like that, if anybody wants to contact us, um, you, can, you can find me at Project Logan or Flash ABC at Gmail. And we have a community that's ready to paint because I got them booked on my wall monthly already, and it's only March, and the wall, the schedule is already filled. That's how many artists are in the city. Would you give us your definition of art? <laughs> my definition of art? Mm -hmm. The freedom of expression. That I, that's the only way. Because I see, you know, I'm in a bike club. And I see these old men working on their bikes. And these are old swing 1956 cruisers and everything. And they turn them into this art form of res restoring. And there's an energy that's released off of that. 
So to me, art is whatever you want to express. I, I never like, and maybe this is why my wall works out of all the city in the wall, I never considered myself an art critic. You know, because the, the one kid that I deny to paint on that wall is going to be the one kid that probably can get that chance to elevate himself somewhere that I, I couldn't get to. So anybody who is free to express is an artist? Yes. He comes on my wall and paints a pig all the time. <laughs> and background color and everything. And look, he's one of the oldest. And I started putting him on, on there. And to me, I can say, oh, his pig isn't up to that quality. But all the kids like him. They yeah. come around, where's Lardo? Lardo. But he does shows. He's on uh, the boardwalk. And everybody thinks Lardo is this young kid coming out of college that doesn't know how to paint. There's he, there he is right there with us. And I've never denied him. He's always come and helped me. And from that, I get people helping me clean up after these messes, because the alley does turn dirty. We need, it's, a, it's a group, and it's a family, and it's a community taking care of our own territory now. And it's seen by a lot of people because of the trade. I have, and, I, and that's one of the problems, is that we even get artists from across, across the country trying to uh, come in and pay to paint. Any other questions? Um, can you explain the rationale behind the color choices? Most of these colors look quite tacky to me in their combinations. Yeah. What did you say? Yeah. Quite tacky colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the tacky colors in the background? That's the artist's choice. Now we're going back to being an art critic. I can't, I can't, I can't criticize. If it's tacky to you, it's beautiful to the lady that lives there. He's a good critic, but he can't deliver oh, public speech. I love it. You know, there, there has to be a critic. There has to be an art critic. Or if not, we don't go forward. If he doesn't tell me it's tacky and stuff like that, I got something on the art. Is hey man, this old guy told me that your shit was tacky. <laughs> this is one of the top graffiti artists in the, in the, in the country. He goes around the whole world. They own a shop, like I said, in Old Park Avenue, and they go around the country. They've done stuff in Washington D.C., California, Europe. Oh Our God. art form has has evolved. Who is it? That's Emmy yeah. Rome. Made you look. Well, that's made you look. Yeah. All right. Question. Right, right there, Andy. How long does one of these things stay up on a wall before it gets replaced with something else? <laughs> on my wall, it's a rotation of once a month, and even on the small spot, two artists every two weeks. A different like mural every month or so. Yeah. What and what did they use? What kind of material did they use to clear off the old picture? Your old house enamel paint. That people throw away. Over? Yeah. So some of these walls have six, eight layers of paint on, up. And that's why I brought that stuff that I have in the back so that you can see. Yeah, they have, there's years. I have eight years worth of graffiti artists painting on there. You're not really describing very well what that is back there. I saw that. Oh, okay. <laughs> what I have in the back is, um, here, let's go. So what happens with my wall and with weather and everything, This is what the wall. This is what the wall looked like from the beginning. Thank you. This is what the wall looked like from the beginning. And you see all the scrub and material and the dirt. They scrape it. Oh wow! All this stuff gets scraped. So what happens with some of some of it? That the enamel starts to get on there and get clear, and you start to get a clean surface. But on the top, the water, I'm sorry, I'm pushing the thing double. The water comes out, and the next thing you know, you get like a big pimple on the wall of water, and it starts to separate. So we have to scrape that off. And what happens when it scrapes is that we were getting these big pieces. So we're selling it. We cut it out. This is a piece of the wall. And what, what somebody was saying, the layers. Yes, there's layers. When you buy this piece for 10 bucks, you're buying eight years worth of graffiti. There it is, the layers of graffiti. Thank you for bringing that up so people can understand, but 
this is what I sh this is what I saw to get the more spray paint for the wall. We sell these around the city and, and on Etsy. And uh, go to the second hand, you get a frame, and then you cut this out in the bands on, you put it in here, and you have a piece of history. And some of the artists, I cut out bigger pieces. You'll see the bigger pieces, but the wall is going to get get scraped anyway. It falls off. It gets thrown away. I turn it into art. My daughter, if you go to Zombie Recycling, you'll see earrings and pendants and stuff made from the wall, the actual wall. So we take from nothing and make something, which is what you know, real art is. Thank you so much, y'all. Oh, we got one more question in the back. Yeah, I'm uh, All right. involved in the railroad community and the railroads in the United States are very appreciative. By the way, you and your bells have been decorating uh, our boxcars. Thank you. Is there any reason for this? No taste. Or is this your freedom no, to express? No, it's just you are. That's a very good question. Why is my wall popular? That's it. And the same question of why do we paint at my wall and why do people paint on freight trains? So that the masses can see it. They love for their stuff to travel. Graffiti is about the trains. They love the trains. I think I showed somebody earlier on Instagram right now, they were in the yards painting and the CTA yards at River Road. The, 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 uh, to, and then the freights are different because they go all the way across the country. So you're sitting there as a kid in Chicago, and if he doesn't know, my hand is what represents the Chicago rails. All the railroads come straight to Chicago. So when they have kid paints in the railroad, all these tracks go around the country to a different rate, and he sees on Facebook that his train made it to LA, that's tapping that ego. <laughs> so it, it is about getting your name. And see, this is where it goes back to that ego thing. Yes, we're egotistic. We like to put up our names. That's what we do. And when it goes across the country, it's, it's Pleasure and joy. If it's on the CTA writing, it's pleasure and joy because it's we know that it's seen by the masses. Because I saw a freight train the other day, a, a car said dump Trump. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, and that what he saw there is a tradition no train to the New York dump Koch train that was going on at Fat Five Freddy. So he saw some history because in the same letter, was it at an angle sideways, the letters? Uh, they were actually like, kind of like a modal coming out. They were like deep, like see? sort of like, like a deep thing. Go Google and you'll find that train and you'll see that that person that painted that is actually t uh, giving a tribute to Fab Five Freddy and the Furious Five when they painted the dump Koch train up in, in New York. <laughs> is there anything in the city art history for years? Is there anything precedent or antecedent of graffiti in the history of art in the world? That, that's a great question because that's what I feel that graffiti is. It's the last great movement, you know, created by American kids. The people that started doing graffiti, I don't think that they understood that it was going to carry on. And as I said, no other art movement since the Renaissance has affected society the way graffiti has. You see it in the commercials, you see it in the videos, you see it in the backdrops and everything. And um, it's our art form. And I think America needs to, if it will just embrace that, I mean, we're way ahead of the game. You didn't mention. Uh you have to get permission to paint on a train car, or do they just do it with nobody looking? <laughs> How fast can they put a yeah. I like that she knows the answer to that. <laughs> that's illegal, that's illegal, as illegal as illegal as it can get. We don't get permission. Defacing property. That is defacing what, what federal is. property, and people have been deported. I have a free oh, artist friend that was deported. <laughs> Oh he didn't God. even know he was going to get deported, too. I was like, man, Flash, I've been living in Chicago all my life. My mother never told me I was... <laughs> no, but it, they put up lookouts, then? And no, there's sensors. There's sensors. There's um, it's the whole system of watching. Uh, there's cameras. 
as soon as a graffiti artist goes into one of these yards, uh, sensors go off and they start recording. Um, the train tracks are more are um, the freight trains are more federal property, and they don't go after you that much because, like he says, a train's going across the country hitting weather, raining weather, and you see it come back and it still has the graffiti piece painted on there clearly. That's a clear code for that train conductor that he knows that trucks not, that train isn't gonna rust. That's why he says that they love it. If you actually see, once a graffiti artist puts a piece on, the train people from the freight company just come and put the numbers back, remove the little numbers, and that's it. They leave the piece, correct? So there's a whole, um, there, there's, if I want to say anything, there's layers of graffiti artists. The graffiti artists that paint trains will not paint on a permission wall. The graffiti artist that does a freight train will not paint a CTA train. There are different levels of different Thank graffiti you, artists. And some, you know, they all come back Thank and they you. do paint. You, want a box? you ask a freight guy, they only paint freight, and that's it. They only want to paint freight. It's um, still that enjoyment of going out into the middle of a cornfield in the middle of the night and painting a train. Is that where they do it when they're stopped? Yeah. In the middle of nowhere? Middle of nowhere. Up in Waukegan. They're not in the rail yard. <laughs> <laughs> Up all, in Waukegan. <laughs> There's also Joliet, too. I, Joliet. It, Bensonville. A couple times I've seen uh, graffiti on trucks. That, do, you, do you know artists to do that? Some trucks give permission, some trucks don't. But you, but you know I see now, do um, What I was saying is um, 36 in Albany, if anybody of you. If any of you gets a chance to go out there, it's called Crawford Steel. That's where they do the cold roading cutting of steel in Chicago. The big trucks come in. The perimeter building is surrounded with graffiti. And then the truck drivers come in and say, man, take my truck. So some truck drivers do, and especially at Crawford, I see it at Crawford Steel. Because it's, it's an advertisement piece, isn't it? <laughs> it makes the truck look good too. And they do it within four hours and the truck driver is there for six, so. Wow. With that, I think um, I'm done. I appreciate everybody listening. I really do from the bottom of my heart. And if I can help you guys leave here with an understanding, you know, of what Chicago graffiti is. Thank you. Thank you. You can sit down. You get the last word. Oh, oh there's a the last. You get yeah, the last you word. That was my last. If people uh, get up and ask questions during the rebuttal okay. or something, you can. Uh, you get the last word. Okay. It's gonna be rebuttals. Thank on. our speaker again for a really This is the time the college starts the famous rebuttal period. So, who would like to give a rebuttal uh, or say something on the world situation or whatever? Give, put up your hand so we can get a count so we'll see how many minutes everybody gets. One, two, three, four, and five. Looks like five, six, six people, right? Okay, uh, everybody gets at least five minutes tonight. Okay. Come on up. Each and every week. the first one? No. Five minutes. Um, it's on. So, uh, let's see now. A couple of quick things. One, there's a comment that uh, the, um, the color combinations were not aesthetically pleasing, and it made me think of a Chicago based artist named Ed Paschke. I heard him talk once, and he said that when he was in college, which was the Art Institute of Chicago, you, the instructor told the class, do, whatever you do, do not have a painting with orange and purple in the same painting. They just don't go together. So what Ed Paschke did is he went home and he made a painting out with, with the orange and purple. So uh, I guess that uh, art is in the eye of the beholder. And uh, another comment, uh, somebody said, uh, with, like, the history of graffiti, and the first thing I thought, being a World War II buff, is Kilroy was here. So, um, uh, I don't know, can you blame graffiti on uh, the American GI? Um, 
I also thought of a college. I, I went to a college in the suburbs. It was founded in the 1870s, and um, the, the original building uh, was built in the 1870s. And I once spoke to a uh, an alum who was later conferred by another alum that uh, in the bell tower of that building, it was tradition for people, students, to break in and carve their names in there. And you can go up there to this day and still see hundred-year-old carved names into the in the bell tower of uh, Old Main of Elmhurst College. So uh, yeah, I think people have been uh, wanting to leave their mark for posterity for a very long time. Uh, fascinating talk. Thanks for coming. Okay. Next. There's an open mic and nobody up there. Next. Okay. Heather, you want to say something? No, I'm going to go next. Tell us, tell us about avoiding mugs. I can remember a long while ago about I being in the art of the beholder. When I went into the Art Institute, there were these three blank canvases of uh, white, and some modern artist had some uh, interpretation of these blank white canvases. I'll never forget, I was in the Art Institute that day, and I was being a little bit uh, sarcastic. So I got my friend and we're staring at these white uh, canvases, and I says, ah, three pictures of polar bear and snowstorm and, and we, we, we kind of were, were going at it. They said, you see you guys, three pictures of polar bear in snowstorm. The, uh, the, the, our, the, the tour guide couldn't stop laughing. He just was just laughing, laughing. And these guys are enthralled. And I said, see what these are? And I said, oh, and then I ended my little blurb with, uh, if you like these, I got some good Brooklyn Bridge revenue bonds. And then when they realized they've been had, I, I kind of got out of the room real quick. But you know, the thing is about art, you know, I find a lot of uh, artistic ability in, in most uh, anything you do, and it's engagement in the creative endeavor. I clearly can remember when I first started going to Springbrook Church, we had a worship director, and she says, to me, she says, you know, Jim, you're an artist. She says, no, I like mechanical stuff. I do this. She says, you videotape, don't you? I says, yes. And you do, you do, you know a lot about sound and speakers, right? They said, yes. And yes, uh, indeed. She then tells me, says, you're an artist. I said, what do you mean? You do videotaping. You do movie editing a little bit on the side. You're kind of proud of it. You're just as fussy about the camera as we are about our sound and our instruments. And you take a little pride in what you're doing, and you kind of uh, take your creative moment and uh, go with it. And uh, from what my understanding was, you know, she might be right, because I have another friend of mine who loves math. He loves the uh, going and seeing all the equations and the polynomials and all that stuff, and all the how they derive something in math. And he can get so absorbed in it that but he'll understand exactly what he's saying at the end of it. And then we have another guy who likes to trade stocks and bonds, and he knows everything there is to know about the companies and the whole bit. And I would think that probably one of the biggest uh, things that we have creatively is even just managing people in and of itself. You know, trying to keep an organization going and teamwork up and running. And, you know, a lot of times me with my involvement in Toastmasters, I see a lot of creative endeavor in the fabricating a good speech, which I think can be just as good as an artistic endeavor as anything. Um, also, in a lot of companies, they're saying today the differences between products is the story behind it. And that uh, marketing, in a lot of ways, is a science of art for products. You know, the jingles, the uh, logos, the other things and a lot of money gets spent behind corporate logos so you know art is is, is in the eye of the, of the beholder and i think an artist 
who really recognizes himself is that engagement in the creative endeavor in something you enjoy. Even a gardener could be a really good artist when he gets his flowers and his stuff just right that he's proud of. And that's what I really consider to be a true artist. Thank you. All right. I think uh, most of Chicago has uh, learned to appreciate this art, street art. I like it. I wish it was a little more political, though. <laughs> It's, uh, they should bring up some topical uh, issues and have that as, in, as part of the yard. Call political cartooning, dude. Okay, dude. And since Charlie Paydock is going to go to my board and complain about me for another organization, yeah. I have a complaint about Charlie Paydock. Oh, boy. Yeah. You no should stop. No personal attacks. Yeah, who was swearing? <laughs> Where's the chair? Where's the Your chair? Your meetings are boring anyway. Where's the chair? That's your opinion. No, it's, uh, you know, you, you drop it right now, Bill. Or no swearing, no get personal out, attacks. Get be out. Before or after. Music, this is about graffiti tonight, Bill. <laughs> if it ain't about graffiti, you, you shouldn't be swearing out. in mixed company. In making personal attacks before or after. Sit down. Don't tell me what to do. So I'm filing a complaint, duly noted, <laughs> on YouTube. And sit down. To Andy and to Tim. Oh, okay, you're done. Enough with the personal attacks. Uh, <laughs> that's bullshit. No, uh, no, Charlie, I think it's a clear violation of you attacking the speaker tonight. Yeah. Yes. yeah, you started it. You started I started it. Yeah, he started it. That's the that's the child's excuse. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, now, since speaking of starting it, I, I just want to say it. And uh, you know, Charlie did um, ask ask our speaker why he um, you know why he painted on boxcars. I I didn't get to hear all of the lecture, but I did not hear our speaker tonight say that he ever painted a boxcar, nor did I see any, any photos of painted boxcars here among, you know, among the stuff that he showed tonight. Now, obviously, there are people that go and paint boxcars, but uh, now, our speaker did say that he got arrested sometimes uh, when he was younger, uh, but as far as the boxcar thing goes, it, it's not really fair to blame our speaker for the actions of other people. Now, Somebody said earlier that orange and purple don't go together. I disagree. They definitely go together because of the color of the Chicago Bears. <laughs> now, um, okay. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's all. All right. Who's next? Well, Andy, can you say anything? Most of it is done. A lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. Our, our speaker tonight gave a, a really good presentation on how people express themselves, you know, through creative art of all kinds. And we are seeing this right now with uh, young people drawing creative signs all over the world, uh, you know, painting here and there about all kinds of slogans about uh, fight for the future, climate change. Like uh, one, uh, Tim said he saw something on a freight car that said, Dump Trump. Well, uh, that kind of creative art, some really good signs. And, uh, you can log on to a couple of websites and it's in pictures. There's tremendous pictures of creative kids, 9, 10, 11 years old, all over the world, carrying posters and signs. And um, I'll probably do a presentation here in a couple months with, as we get into the summer on the best of the best of what's happening all over the planet. But uh, there's not a lot I have to say about uh, the speaker, uh, he covered pretty much all the different levels of graffiti, and uh, there's a lot I didn't know about how sophisticated 
some of these panels were all the different kinds of paint cans and uh, pressure settings and everything else to produce some of these murals. So it is a, a fine, definitely a, a, an art form where it used to be just considered vandalism on the wall. Right? So, uh, again, I'd like to thank our speaker for tonight. And uh, if there's no other rebuttals, the speaker has the last word. Yeah, I got Do you have a rebuttal, Charlie? Uh oh, yeah, I do. Uh oh. Well, personal attacks, Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I will attack. I will critique it. Well, first of all, where is he? Where is who? Where is the speaker? Over here. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. First of all, I want to know your name is Flash ABC. Is that your surname or forename? Do you know by? No. I call you Mr. ABC. Uh, the, so the ABC stands for as an acronym, Artistic Bombing Crew. All right. So every graffiti artist will take say his name, and then he'll say his crews. Like I'm part of a couple of crews, so I'll say ABC TCS WRS CTA. All right, but seriously, um, I do have, I have studied a lot of art issues, it's consumed a lot of my life. Um, there's an issue of why people, more people don't like, like it. I was trying to figure out what, why they might not like it as an art form. People say, well, I don't like that painting. I think I discovered it. You, you got to keep the background clear. Yes, it's losing something. And yes, you have to have rules. Um, just like classical painting, it's certain rules. And there's perspective rules, and there's a lot of rules in art. And um, to say, well, this is, that's contrary. No, I would. I, I think the application of certain optics, there, there is a visual literacy. And I, I said, why? It, it, I think the one flaw that to me strikes is, is clutter. I mean it. I, 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 I would like to see, see pictures, you know, when people see paintings. He didn't like that painting at all, all right. But why do people go in there and say, well, I like, this common, you don't need even any background. They say, well, I like this picture, I like that one, or I like this one, or I like that one, the picture of a flower, you know, stuff like this, and you go to the artist. People would always say that. And um, how do people say, well, I like that work, that graffiti? Do they say that? Now, why? Do they not say it? Um, there's so many styles that are out there that have been over the years and more to come. Someone's going to come up with a new one. You know, you pointed out Picasso is recognizable, a style, but your style there. How can it, I would think there has to be some adherence to some rules. Like you were saying, the beginning and the end had to be identical. Now, there's a, there are rules. I've been, actually, I've been studying this Eskimo art from the Northwest. And I got a couple books, and they are following certain rules. And they remind me of you guys. Because, I'm serious, they are self-taught. And I have bought from their artists. And they, 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 a lot of them just stay within the community. We're not acting, they're not academically trained. But there are certain, that's what I mean, I even saw similarities to it. There's rules. You know, uh, but I don't know what they are, but I, what would make it an art form that would appeal to greater numbers? Your public art, and you want to appeal to the, the greatest number of people. I don't know an artist that does not want to have widespread appeal. Any any art form wants to cheat. No artist wants to be, to, oh, it's terrible. But seriously looking at it, the only thing I could think is, is, is a more contrasting background 
something like this. And then, yeah, I might even try to study it, but there's too much to the eyes for some reason. Um, I don't understand it. You can sit down. But everything it evolves. It's a young art form. You know, and this is a period, as you said. You're identifying certain periods, you know. And there's certain styles emerge, you know. Uh, regarding initials, you said you wanted to do political ones. I'm glad you don't do MAGA. <laughs> we did, we did one about a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, well, I'll, uh, I'm a Trump uh, things. Uh, yeah, I can I can dig the initial part. You know that has a tradition. I, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't get into the murals. I I. I think you guys have something better. The murals are, are to me, I, I it's a community sentiments or something, you know. Um, to, but uh, that's when we take a hard look, you know, and we find it. There, there must be people who are who are more popular than others. And to oh, yeah. see what the more popular people are doing and emulate what they're doing. I mean, I, I do graphic design and I throw things out because it didn't work. Yes. Or so forth. I try it again. I'll be back with the I'm spacing it. You can do that. I do work on computers now. You can do all that. So I have to, I'm lucky. You can move around. You can change colors, sizes, all kinds of things. Good. Unlimited almost. Yeah. You know. It's really very easy with computers are much better than three-dimensional type of art form. But I think you have to look at it and say, why would, you know, what, why do some people not like it? I would actually even ask people, like, what, why don't you like this, you know, or something like that. It is public art, and uh, you have gotten some resistance from the community, the, the legal people. You know, stuff like that. Anyhow, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Who else next? Great about our. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, There's more yeah, coming. Jonathan's coming. Jonathan's coming. Yeah. Ladies first. Ladies. Did you start out with window pane? <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, go up. Jonathan. Jonathan. I apologize for being late. This is by Henry David Thoreau in his essay, Life Without Principle. We should treat our minds, that is ourselves, as innocent and ingenious young, young people whose guardians we are. Be careful what objects and what subjects we thrust on their attention. Read not the times, read the eternities. Conventionalities are at length as bad as impurities. Even the facts of science may just be mined by their dryness unless they are in the sense effaced each morning, or rather rendered fertile by the dews of fresh and living truth. Knowledge does not come to us by details, but in flashes of light from heaven. So this evening, uh, from the work that I am familiar with, Flash, I want to thank you for giving us uh, fresh and living truth, and I want to thank you for sharing with us the eternities because uh, the times is so 20th century. So, uh, here's one that I wrote. I'm in one of those focus night piece dreams, walking and I don't know where my feet lead. So until it's over, I'll be reached by only these spirit songs. Spinning with another windy tree, hammock with the late clouds lyrics free. So until it's over, I'll be reached by only these spirit songs. Floating like a wing on a rooftop oasis. It's been a day since I worried about that non-issue, the Bill Mountains burning down. Floating like a wing on a rooftop oasis. It's been a day since I worried about that non-issue, and now it's working out. Floating like a wing on a rooftop oasis. It's been a day since I worried about that non-issue. Hurry to the house to kiss her and say thank you. I'm in one of those focused night piece streams, walking and I don't know where my feet lead. So until it's over, I'll be reached by only those spirit songs. 
Every day is bursting with infinite more colors than a fiery summer sky shows us. Stardust rays sparkle and shine in all of what our open eyes could never know or guess. Each creates a vast new light in the cosmos from a wildly other kind of bow and mist. This lesser known way is not where we often find it bloom. In these parts, patience is like a gold chest. 365 circles drawn in an outdoor journal. We wish we could fly over all these hurdles. All together they make a scatter shape. Together, who can explain? This never ending higher wire, heart bend, but yet no heartbreak. And there's always plenty of time to say thanks when the call goes out. There's always plenty of ideas to wake us up, the dreamer knows how. And if we only got one here tonight, let's make it grateful, let's make it thankful. If we only got one here tomorrow morning, let's raise a voiceful, let's David this Goliath model. 365 circles drawn in an outdoor journal. That's how many days we can volunteer at our local. 365 circles, we are learning to fly over these hurdles. When we have strength in numbers, we can fly over Earth's roads. Thank you, Flash. All right. I'm taking 10 seconds. I would like to speak. Provider of goods. Provider of goods. Provider of getting out of the poor. No central plan needed. What am I talking about? Capitalism. Capitalism. All right, you're, you're next. My latest crusade. I spent a lot of time on the internet to read emails. You know, and talking to Mike a little bit. Just a little bit. You don't be real close. Yeah. I, if I don't delete emails every day, by the end of the week, I'll have a thousand. Um, <laughs> and uh, there are people from the left, people from the right, everybody's fighting about whatever's going on. And uh, I don't know why I do it, because after a while, I just get kind of burned out. But um, I think it's really important that we, little people, start, stop focusing on someone else's being a problem, and we start focusing on what we have in common and how we can find solutions. Um, and so I stay in there and I keep doing it. Um, I was going to leave the country back in 2005. I had my visa from the money in the bank in France. I was ready to go. Um, and uh, for some reason, I said I'm going to come back and make a stand. So I'm here, and it's easier to take. I was pretty paranoid when I originally made the place to move. Anyway, so what I've been working on lately, especially since Trump has uh, taken it upon himself to reduce the corporate tax code and instill these tariffs, which most economists will tell you don't work, um, he's pretty much destroyed all the markets for products we had in our country um, between the green products, the uh, meat, and um, cars, and God only knows what else and where they are. The whole thing's in limbo, and all the while we're sitting here and he's talking about getting a deal. Um, <laughs> China is off making relationships every place else. So, the One Belt, One Road initiative kind of thing. And when this is all over, we're not going to get it back. So whatever leverage we had in this global market is toast. Now, anyway, so so that's kind of the backstory. But the, the thing is, right now we've got a lot of um, white supremacists who, who um, think the solution to our problems is to get rid of all the in illegals climbing over the fence and uh, they are definitely on the wrong page with this and my usual response is well you're a good patriotic American get in your little pickup truck go down there and build your fucking wall you know of course they don't want to do that they want to support Trump with the five billion dollars which are probably going to be a kickback on one of his other little scams <laughs> but um, anyway so I came up with this idea and I said say you know we're losing all this revenue because um, we're not taxing the corporations anymore. I said, and we're losing jobs because they're replacing all the people with robots. I think, since corporations are people, robots should pay employer taxes. So, <laughs> I called up uh, 
and then Dick Durbin, and I said, you know, I really think that we should have some kind of a fair scale. If, you, if, if a robot replaces 10 people, then there should be a tax of you know 10 times whatever it was going into the revenue, because we have to make up the losses here. Otherwise, there aren't going to be any benefits for us. You know, because all the money gets funneled off in a war machine, and we get all the scraps, and then we feel guilty like we have to gee, run a doll or something. And um, so, so I did that. And the other thing I did, did and I said, you know, as long as we're on this, they're, they're pushing this whole thing with electric cars, and everybody's pushing this whole thing. And I'm sure that a lot of people are making payoffs to keep things the way they are. As soon as we get away from petroleum vehicles, they're going to change it over to a miles-driven tax instead of a road tax. Said so all these people that think they're going to get out of this. <laughs> so, so I threw that one in there too. Mileage but, tax. Huh? Mileage tax. Yep. Mileage tax. So thank you. Uh, who else has got a rebuttal? Okay, our speaker. Our speaker gets the last word, and we'll wrap it up. Take as long as you need, sir. Okay. Take us out with a bang. Yes. All right. Who's heard of Bansky? Who's heard of what? Who's heard of Bansky? In space. Okay. There's one that begins. So you know he exists, right? Exactly. Yes. So the problem is graffiti artists, you're not supposed to know who they are. And that is the problem with the internet and everything that, I come, that has come. I'm able to come out because of my age and then at 50. But if you go back to when I was 15 doing the illegal stuff, you wouldn't have known me. I was not trying to show you who I was. I was trying to put the message out there. The, the pieces that I did when I was young, um, some of them diminished, say my name. It was buddy, goofy, stuff like that. So for you, for us to come out and say we're graffiti artists, and if you know graffiti artists, yes, I've done freights, I've done billboards, I've done CTA, I've done abandoned buildings. I've done every, every manufacturing company that has left Chicago, I have gone in there and vandalized those empty factories. And you can find out how, just by going on the internet. I didn't want to go in there, but I did. And I put my name up. And then I left. I didn't take the picture. Somebody else did. Somebody hashtagged me. Next thing you know, is this you, Flash? Right, is this you, I'm afraid? Is this you, on this? So if you really want to know graffiti artists, all you have to do is follow the hashtags. <laughs> but there is a tradition of what I do that says I'm a graffiti artist. And that's why I, I like that the gentleman asked the question, well, oh, I didn't hear him hit phrase, but yeah, I have hit phrase. Okay. We try not to admit it because you're not supposed to know who we are. And that is what is lost in our art form, the surprise. The Bansky is exactly what um, I'm talking about. No one knows who he is. You've never seen him but yet everybody knows about him. We need to have that again, so that when we want to write our free political freedom or our message to whoever, that it is a generalization of society that is going on right now. If I was to, if I was to hashtag fuck Trump, imagine all the graffiti that you'd see. Yeah. It's out there. The hashtags are out there. Uh, like he said, there's, um, it's the last way to get the message out. And that's what we're looking for. When you pass by on the train that you see the message that we're leaving, whether it's our name or it's a political message. But I try not to talk about it, but the wall, we have done a lot of political messages that got a lot of people mad at us. And we keep doing it. We have the guy kneeling. I think we have it here. Um, and we'll finish off with that Where's picture. That wall at? Finish? In Logan Square. No. Yeah. Logan yeah. Square behind Liberty Bank, Milwaukee and Fullerton. Cool. And a couple of weeks ago, and this is my, okay, let's see if I can find it. We did put up a political statement recently on there. 
because of all the stuff that was going on, and I'm speeding through it right now because it was part of the slideshow. But if you don't know, I, a, a gentleman named Andy Willis came to me, and he started showing me about all this political stuff. And the first pr raw production that we did was the one that she brought, which is Water is Life, where these Native Americans were going around the country, and they wanted to address this Water is Life. And I gave them the wall, the biggest wall out of all their walls, to put up Water is Life. And hundreds of people came and donated. They left Chicago with enough supplies for South Dakota for all the stuff that was going on in the winter over there, because they painted this in the winter. And then the next one was the, I'm going to for the, um, as you know, Logan Square has a big rent increase going on, and we wanted to put a message about that. Let me see if I find it real quick, because uh, I do want to share it, because it, and here it is. This was our representation because of so much shit that was going on with Trump and everything and Puerto Rico and Maria and everything, we decided to put up and we were putting up what you see is an Uncle Sam. This is a traditional uh, piece because if you look it up, it's a black and white. I think it's from it's from the political 1950s and it's a Congress. There's a Congress on the snail. Uncle Sam sitting on a snail Congress, an Indian drinking out of water, a vulture rewriting the Bill of Rights. <laughs> and the increase in Logan Square renting that looks just crazy. This, I'm trying to find a frontal piece of this piece. Let's see if we find it. Okay. Neighborhoods against displacement. This represents Logan Square now. All whacked out buildings going up at any angle. The eagles all dirty. And throughout it, if you look, we're strangling ourselves. We're choking ourselves out of our own neighborhood. And uh, the artist that did this is Andy Willis, and he came to us, and a had graffiti artist put up his version of Logan Square. And of course, another artist came in and put that right next, and then everybody knew what we were talking about after we put her up. Ah. What did that image say? It's a kneeling girl wearing a Ka Colin pa Kaepernick jersey. Um, that's a Colin Kaepernick jersey. That's a Colin Kaepernick jersey. She's raising her fist as a, uh, you should have shown her knee, but she's got the football thing in the jersey. And now the jersey represents what? Colin Kaepernick, who never got to play. She has her hand up. So we try at times to take that wall and do probably what you guys want us to do. <laughs> Let's get the message out. The neighborhood's changing so much. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to the back, to, back to Homer Simpson. That's the Homer Simpson. <laughs> and that's the one thing of uh, the Freedom of Graffiti, I'll show you right there. Homer, the, the artists of Homer Simpson have allowed graffiti artists to use them, and they don't sue them like other artists do where they come back at them. So it's not the first. Homer Simpson on my wall, here's another one. <laughs> I, I, I have you, all different Homers. We're all just a bunch of Homers. Isn't that a great message? Have you done anything with Beavis and Butthead? Not yet. <laughs> Working on it. This was a sushi company that came. Play on words, Homer. Almost like Homie. You guys didn't get to see some of the real Homer stuff Simpson. that they've been putting up the last oh. couple of years. And this is what I, I really like to do. I, I like to share with you guys. This is, I like to share with anybody that wants to understand what we're doing. Wow. Come on, you guys don't remember Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Isn't that what that's from? That image? Yeah. Right there? Yeah. Or uh, what's this image from? Come on, you old schoolers. Not Texas, but what was the other one? Night of the Living Dead. This is a zombie movie. Oh, Night of the yeah. Living Dead, where he's pressed up against the window oh, and he's right. trying to get to the little girl. 1950 movie. There we go. 
What is that image with that woman? She's probably from the same movie. Because they take a movie and they'll use the images from that movie she where all of China, them. Oh, here we go, Night of the Living, the Sons of the Living Dead. So she's from yeah. Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Remember that scene? The guy right here. Right? This is part of a movie clip theater. And they added, actually added to their thing. And look at the artist. Goya. G-O-Y-A. Just like the can of Goya flavor. And, and, the, uh, and the famous Spanish artist, Francisco Goya. There you go. Look at, look at that. Tying it all in. Yeah. And I bet you he doesn't even know about it. This, you see the top? They put the images of the people walking. Little subtle things like that. The Bring it all together. And the, and the, and the gas pump and the car's on fire. Oh, uh, you yeah. saw that? Yeah, I saw it. That's the scene from Night of the Living Dead. Oh, see, he, somebody saw it. He I knows. Because I saw the movie. And you, the, that's what art is, to connect. You know, he knew that pump was from that movie. I did I'm with you, I didn't know. But art is to connect little things, the little things. So even if you don't care about the letters and stuff, it, it, they always try to connect in another way. This was my favorite because uh, it's parked right across from a gas station. And the lady said that when she opened up the gas station, she closed she closed her garage door again because it was just like too intense. God. The picture doesn't do it justice. So just so you know, this is what we do. We try to evolve and get people, other people along. If you guys ever want to come by the wall and do a tour, I will gladly come by and give you guys a tour. So I've done it for many groups. Okay, what's what's the exact address of the wall again? The, the exact wall is behind Liberty Bank in Chicago, yeah. uh, Milwaukee and Fullerton, behind Liberty Bank, the first parking lot. I think it's, the address is 2948 North Medill because the, the actual address is on the Medill site. But it's a wraparound. We wrap around the whole wall. And I'm there curating. Here's a whole wall from the CTA blue line. Here's, here's the parking lot, the train. So, yeah, you'll see it. You'll be like, oh, they change that wall all the time. Yes, I change that wall all the time. Here's Liberty Bank, Fullerton Avenue. And as you see, the whole neighborhood now, I've been doing this for eight years. There was no graffiti then. Now every corner of Logan on Milwaukee Avenue has graffiti. And I'm not getting paid. <laughs> and we do it for the love. Okay. Thank you. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll take care of that, don't worry. Uh, I'm gonna pull mine Oh, out. okay, all right. I thank you. All right. Have a round of applause for her because she's been here as long as I have. She busted her butt for us. Thank you. She's the best. Okay. Right? She's the best. Thank you. Have a sound, Andy. Okay, that's Thank it you. for tonight, and uh, we will see you all next week for another invigorating presentation. We're adjourned.